This is the Anycubic Photon Mono X 6K. Let's take a look at some of the specs. The most important feature in an LCD resin printer is of course the screen. Your screen resolution determines how detailed you can go and this unit has a 9.25 inch 6K screen. The difference between the 4K Mono X and the 6K is significant when you're trying to print highly detailed models. That 9.25 inch screen gives you a build area of 245 by 122 by 197 millimeters. There are only a handful of machines that can print bigger, even today. This 3D printer has an impressive 350 to 1 contrast ratio, which renders sharp edges and corners. The LED matrix provides uniform light across your screen for even curing and the 44,000 lux power will allow you to cure layers faster, up to 80 millimeters per hour. Recent 3D printers have come a very long way in the past few years. Reliability and durability have increased significantly. Our machines have endured several thousand prints without needing repair or replacement. Today we'll be doing a long-term review of the Anycubic Photon Mono X6K, We've been using the 6K machines for just over a year now, so this review will mostly cover the gear and upgrades we use to make everything easier, and the results that you can expect from this machine. Whether you're printing miniatures, models, or prototypes, Resin does a great job with very fine detail. If you're just coming over from FDM, the difference will be night and day. These models are some quick samples we printed to show you some of the abilities of this machine. All of these were printed with Soraya Tech Fast resins. For the dark gray castle, black dye was added. The white and the smoky black are all stock colors. These were all printed with anti-aliasing off and the supports were seamed off for speed. Stay tuned at the end of this video, where we will show you some fine detail close-ups of these models. Welcome back to Space Age Tech, where we look at the tech that pushes the limits. This is a 6K unit we keep at home for test files before we run them in bulk at the shop. And it's made of a simple enclosure from a free IKEA cabinet. It's sealed with silicone and gaskets, and it has an intake which runs through the printer and exhausts out a window with fans pulling negative pressure to keep everything sealed tight. Everything we use here will be linked below as part of the Amazon Affiliates program. We use stainless steel lever handle knobs for machinery. The OEM handles will rot and fall apart, but this gives you the leverage you need to remove everything one-handed. You can see that we use Sovel flexible build plates in our 6K units. They work flawlessly and are much cheaper than most alternatives. On this specific unit, we use a drawer rail with a magnetic catch mounted to the lid to keep it out of the way. I may do another video on the design of the system if enough people are interested. The key to quality prints that are not brittle is quality resin. We prefer Soraya Tech Fast and we mix it with Tenacious when needed. It's always important to wear gloves if you're going to touch resin. We use textured disposable nitrile for the messy jobs and these Amazon fully coated nitrile ones when it's just changing a flex plate or working with alcohol. Another essential is a silicon bladed squeegee for checking the NFEP or FEP after each print. You can run it along the bottom and check for anything left behind or just remix your resin if it has sat there for a while. Do not use a plastic or metal scraper on the NFEP FEP, you will tear it. We always use a stainless strainer like this when changing colors or just removing resin from the tank to catch any leftovers. I strongly recommend you keep paper towels handy, really close by. 
ideally something you can reach with one hand while you're dealing with the printer. I like the Presto ones from Amazon. They end up being nearly the cheapest ones per sheet and the cheapest per foot, and they're by far softer and more absorbent than other brands we've tried. You will likely need isopropyl alcohol unless you're using a water-soluble resin or one of the homebrew cleaning recipes. We run a 91% in the Anycubic wash and the Cure Plus machines. I suggest you invest in a decent spray bottle for isopropyl alcohol, something that won't leak and that sprays forcibly enough to push resin out of the model. It will keep your wash tank alcohol much cleaner if you give your models a quick spray over a trash can before running the wash cycle. You may want to consider a large syringe for emptying the resin tank. It makes the job much easier. We also prefer to use the diamond grit files for support remnant removal. These won't clog up the steel files or sandpaper and they come in every size and shape you could ever need. We use the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus for the 6K. It's easy to use and does a great job for all-in-one. We usually use a mirror stainless steel platter or a glass round mirror to quickly swap models in and out for curing. The Washing Cure Plus tank is excellent and we haven't seen a single fail. Let's take a look at this quick and dirty prints in finer detail. Bear with my motorized turntable. It seems to be on its last legs and its replacement isn't here yet. These models were mostly grabbed from an old test print folder. So if you know the name of the model and want to link it below, please do. The settings were not dialed in for these and all were run for speed, not quality. Both castles were done without supports except on the bottom. You can see the fine detail preserved in this model. If you were planning to paint this, you could do it without any sanding or prep. This is the reason we do 90 plus percent of our prototyping in resin now. On this second castle, we actually clipped the top of each tower off. It had a rounded ball and the design didn't look quite right. You can see the lighter areas from the flush cutter. You could file them slightly or just paint and go. Here's a quick photo of both castles dry brush and you can see the fine details come through. This gyroid was painted with very minimal supports on the bottom only. The tolerances were very tight and since this model seems like it was designed for FDM, it is actually difficult to piece together. One of the bonuses of steaming supports off is that the print becomes slightly malleable and you can make things fit together better and then let it drive in its final state. This alien figurine was printed in a semi-translucent smoky black resin. Even though the tail and fingers are very fine, it actually feels very durable thanks to a 15% tenacious mix. Everything will, has just enough flex not to break off, but is rigid enough to hold its shape. This final design is an enclosure for an ADSB module mounted in a plane. The enclosure sat in direct sunlight in high altitude for over 500 hours. It ran a very hot Raspberry Pi 4 module inside and it was suspended by two 6mm screws. You can see it has not yellowed or become brittle with this constant UV exposure and the large temperature swings. The previous PETG enclosure failed after about 150 hours. Resin can be durable if you choose the right resin for the job and you design to its strengths. As much as we love our FDM printers, we find it harder and harder to use them over our resin ones every single day. Now let's talk about some of the other important things you might want to consider. If you're going to print in resin, you definitely want an enclosure of some type. We actually use either Husky or Seville garage cabinets at the shop for our enclosures. It's much cheaper to use ready-made products than it is to build them from scratch if you're trying to scale a print farm. You could fit 12 of the 6K units in a single 60 by 24 by 72 cabinet 
without lids. And the same cabinet will handle even the largest of resin printers, like the Anycubic Photon M3 Max. We may do an in-depth video explaining how to choose, modify, or customize your enclosure, so please comment below if that's something you'd be interested in. You could also look at a used server rack if you don't mind sealing it up well. I prefer to stick to metal or polycarbonate enclosures whenever possible. Acrylic can crack with UV and alcohol exposure, so just keep that in mind if you're shopping for pre-built enclosures. We've made many custom 2020 aluminum T-slot enclosures over the years for FDM and resin printers, but it's time consuming and not as affordable. The first thing you should do before you print with any resin printer is verify it has a screen protector installed. I will usually grab a bullet brand screen protector with a new printer until we scale in enough to cut our own. If you have access to a Cricut or similar tool, you might just grab an iPad screen protector instead and cut it out yourself. You may also want to consider a baby bottle steamer for easier support removal. We use a dry heat chamber at the shop, but I've used a baby bottle steamer for support removal at home for years now. It's fast and easy to do, and as long as you let your resin print dry before you paint it or seal it, usually three hours will do, you won't have any issue. We will have more reviews coming soon of other printers and other interesting tech. Please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. Thank you.